we just want to briefly touch with uh, on this fact that the state of emergent the, the the state of disaster has been extended. One person who's critical of this is Professor Alex van den Heer, who's chair of Social Security Systems Administration and Management Studies at Wits University. Prof van den Heer, for welcome and thanks for your time. You quoted as saying this is a bad idea. Why? But I think that we, we're in a stage now where we should be managing the epidemic through non-pharmaceutical interventions um, and focusing really on the community-based transmission risks that remain. They're going to be there, and they're going to be there for the next few months, um, uh, potentially quite a few months, which means that the measures that are in place that are effectively... Um, uh, 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 putting a hold on any kind of economic activity, such as, for instance, the, the remaining closed borders, the restricted countries that can travel to South Africa, which is largely the reason for the maintenance of these, uh, the Disaster Management Act, are probably not having any effect on the epidemic and yet are harmful to the economy. So the question is really whether we should be switching over to using more conventional um, legislative tools to manage the residual public health risks and uh, only reintroducing a Disaster Management Act element if we need to manage something that can't be managed in any other way. And I, I'm not sure that we still require the Disaster Management Act as a primary tool. Is there is there any particular downside, though? I mean, for example, if they wanted to act, let's say there's um, uh, something that needs dealing with, um, a, a spike in infections, maybe the public do need to be controlled again in some way or another. W what tools are available to government to do that? Because, for example, I'm noticing, uh, and, and this is anecdotal, it's nothing other than my impression, uh, a, a decline in mask wearing, a decline in uh, social distancing. Uh, what does government do when that starts uh, lapsing to the point where it becomes potentially perilous? Well, the issue is that we should be using um, other legislative tools, not the Disaster Management Act. R well, what so are the those? Is, well, the, the National Health Act, for yes. one. So okay. that is really where we manage our public health intervention. And so mask wearing and those kinds of regulations can be introduced in that way and protected. And I agree, mask wearing... Um, high-risk gatherings should all be uh, subject to some form of protection. You know, workplaces do require health protocols to be in place, and they, they're also subject to health and um, uh, uh, potentially Department of Labor regulations. So the issue is to actually use the regulatory tools that are more accountable through government right. than the Disaster Management Act, which concentrates power in it, behind a uh, uh, in, in which behind a veil in which we do not really see the logic for many of the specific decisions. And I'll, I'll give one. The, um, the current list of restricted countries that can travel to South Africa um, is, um, is, it does not offer any protection to the domestic epidemic. The, uh, if you're coming from the United States, which is, yes. which is going through a bad time, the protocol that is currently in place is that you are, there's a pre-travel test 20, 72 hours before you travel, and when you arrive, you download the app, um, and potentially you could be subject to a test at the border, which is an antigen test, which will give you an immediate 30-minute result. So here you've got a belts and braces regime in which uh, a positive person is going to get through. Uh, it's going to be very few positive people who are going to get through that regime. They're more likely to be infected in South Africa than to have been infected in their country of origin. So under those circumstances, what is the rationale for that list? And I've looked through that list. Right. And there are countries there with zero infections <laughs> at this point. I don't know how the list has been compiled, what's behind it, or what the logic is. Many of the countries have fewer infections than South Africa, and it just makes no, no sense. What we should be doing is saying, let's open up the travel. We manage the restrictions as we've got with public health interventions. Right. And we carry on because we cannot maintain these restrictions for, for 12 months. Thank you very much, Professor Alex van den Heer, for joining us from Wits University. You may have a thought on that. We're going to take some calls in a moment. News. Experts. Analysis. Where things stand. What you need to know. Drive home with John Pullman. On 702.